And hello everybody, welcome back to the channel guys, I hope you're all well, before we do get into today's video as always, please do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily Liverpool content. Guys, in today's video we've got a few bits and pieces to discuss, we're of course going to be going over the game last night and talking about the positives from that match, we're also going to be providing you an update with regards to Ryan Gravenbach and yesterday there was a few records broken, yeah it always seems that a certain individual was always breaking records but also the manager has as well, so we're going to be discussing that in detail whilst also going through why Liverpool are set for a big boost amid a new Premier League twist. So quite a few bits and pieces to discuss in today's video but let's start with last night of course Liverpool continuing the unbeaten run that has sort of stretched back from last season um, as we continue our fine form to the start of this campaign. Now again it wasn't plain sailing initially again we found ourselves behind it's something that we keep on doing and all jokes aside we do love this comeback it is something that needs to be eradicated from our game because at a certain point we're not going to be able to have that comeback and we're going to drop points so we need to diagnose what the issue is there and as to why we are going a goal behind every single game um, but I'm sure Jurgen Klopp will be working on that I'm sure he will also be slightly concerned as to why it keeps on happening but one thing that you can't sort of criticise is uh, the guile to come back and win the game despite a certain setback but we don't want to keep giving away a goal every single game and making it hard for ourselves so it's something that I want to be nipped into the bud very very soon um, and very very sharpish so we can actually go on there and, and not go a goal behind every single game however of course yesterday there was a wholesale changes uh, players that don't necessarily start in the Premier League came in and, and started as well and as I said the first half wasn't that good it was pretty disjointed however going into the second half was much improved of course Darwin Nunes got our equaliser through the penalty and then of course the, the floodgates opened from there on and we managed to go get a couple more goals however Ryan Gravenberg made his debut Ryan Gravenberg was substituted due to a what looked like an injury however I can settle nerves it was only cramp um, usually this well he hasn't really really played an awful lot over the last year um, so maybe just as normal but as I said it doesn't look like it's too concerning there for Ryan Gravenberg which is very good news indeed with regards to him because we don't want to see him go out but I felt like he played quite a good game to be fair and showed that he had that quality within the middle of the park he also said that Jurgen Klopp said that he could run free and do kind of what he wants within reason um, and it's shown it looked he looked really really good and I was impressed with his uh, debut and he certainly has something some more to show um, going forward so fair play to Gravenberg back. Obviously, other players that did impress yesterday, Mo Salah again. Just coming off of the bench just shows the impact that he does has to this team. Sometimes you take him for granted when he starts week in and week out. Well, not all of us take him for granted, but some maybe fans do. Um, but coming off of the bench just showed his sheer quality and got involved with the goal as well. And his goal contributions just keep on um, stacking up at the moment. And again, he reached another record. Um, he was the um, it was his 42nd European uh, competition for the Reds, or is his 42nd goal in European competition for the Reds, and as per Opta, that is the most joint most for, uh, for any player for any English club. The only other player to reach that tally was Arsenal's Thierry Henry. So as I said, he is re getting in back into the uh, record books, and sorry, that wasn't goal, that was goal contribution. So 42 for Mo Salah, and that, as I said, the joint most um, of any player from an English team, Thierry Henry, is the only other player to reach that record. So as I said, Mo is no stranger with breaking records recently and there's another one for him as well. As I said, he got onto the score sheet just again. Now, in terms of other record breakers, Jurgen Klopp becomes the um, first manager to get register 50 European wins as a Liverpool manager. So he has the most um, in that time. It's no surprise. He's got to, what, three, four European finals, Europa League, um, and then the three Champions League finals. So, yeah, he's done really, really well in European competitions. And that win yesterday takes him to 50 European wins, the most of any Liverpool manager. So, yeah, another record broken there. Again, we are breaking records quite a lot recently. Um, and yeah, overall, good performance and uh, we move on. We've got West Ham next in the Premier League. Now, talking about the Premier League, we all know it is the most richest league in the whole of the world. And currently, to put it into perspective of just how much Liverpool earned, really, from Premier League TV right deals, uh, £106 million was made just from TV right deals alone um, in the 2021-2022 campaign. However, it does look as though we are going to be having another major shake-up. Yes, currently, I know it's televised. We've got so many games televised at the moment. And Jurgen Klopp probably won't be happy with uh, the new 
proposed plans for the shakeup. Basically, 200 out of 300 or so games, I think, or just over 320 games or something like that, are currently shown to on British TV between sort of Sky Sports, TNT Sports, and I think Amazon Prime have a bit as well. However, basically, the Premier League and the TV um, and the TV companies want to do another major shakeup to televise more games in total, which again, as I said, will probably provoke Jurgen Klopp. Basically, there's a slot on a Sunday night now where they're looking to try and show more late night games, 6.30 p.m. slots and more lunchtime games as well, maybe on the Sunday as well, because they want to try and show more Premier League games throughout the weekend. Now, we know how the TV companies are like. They love to uh, try and milk the Premier League as much. And it is being said that, as I said, due to this, another 25% in revenue could go back into the team. So, as I said, Liverpool already earning, you know, a lot of money through TV right deals as such now within the UK. £106 million, as I stated, just from 2021, 2022. But now with the new proposed plans to show a further more, 25% more games, uh, Liverpool could see a huge huge incline in uh, TV revenue once again from this TV shakeup. And as I said, fans may need, or fans are going to be the ones that are going to be affected. The players will obviously be affected as well. But as I say, TV companies usually just do what the heck they want when it comes to um, when it comes to showing the games. They don't really care for the players' welfare as such, and they certainly don't care for the fans either. Um, and theirs is about how many games they can show on a on a thing. Now, basically, there, there's been always been a debate with regards to the free PM slot. However, look, that's never going to change. They want to try and make the women's game a big thing. And what they're trying to do is put the free PM slots there for the women. So basically, foot fans or the, the regular fans in the UK can't watch uh, their team haven't got a fire stick, um, they get then forced to watch the women's game as a proposed plan to try and boost their numbers. Um, however, as a part of that, they then do want to fill the Sunday night slot about 6.30pm and a set of Sunday uh, lunchtime fixtures. Usually on a Sunday, it's usually it's 2pm, 4pm, um, the kickoffs. So it's usually Super Sundays, two back to back, but what they want to try and do is four. So the, the lunchtime, then the 2 p.m., then the 4 p.m., and then a 6.30 p.m. slot. And as I said, the proposed plan will see um, a 25% more games shown uh, within the UK, within the Premier League. As a result, will equal more revenue for Liverpool Football Club through the TV revenue split. However, as a result, would be a major shakeup. This will probably come into effect uh, for the 2024 when um, it's reassessed. However, as I said, match-going fans are always going to be affected. Sunday night at 6.30, travelling away from home, it's, it's, it's a tough one to ask. But, you know, as I said, these TV companies do whatever they want, whenever they want it. Um, but that's the new proposed plans with regards to it. Um, but, yeah, um, interesting stuff there indeed. I don't think Jurgen Klopp will be happy. Uh, we see him complaining a lot about the um, the lunchtime kickoffs. Imagine him with these new proposed plans as well. He'll be absolutely raging. Um, but, yeah, that's all I've really got for you today, guys, in terms of Liverpool news. Um, uh, the Premier League, as I said, looking to do a major shake-up. Um, um, with regards to the TV rights deals. Um, and then, of course, regards to yesterday when King can carry on an unbeaten run, which is good to see. Uh, but Liverpool fans, do let me know your thoughts on the result last night. And do let me know your thoughts on regards to this Premier League TV rights shake-up. Are you for them um, showing more games at different times throughout the weekend? Or are you against it? Are you more on the sort of fan side? Are you a match-going fan that doesn't want to be travelling um, from, I don't know, Bournemouth at 6.30pm on? On a, on a Sunday, on a Sunday night. Um, as I said, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. That does bring us to the end of today's video. As always, please do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily Liverpool content. Thank you guys and I'll see you all next time. Take care. Peace.